Let's do something interesting today. Today, I'm going to talk about climate zones, major cities, and how this can affect your greenhouse and what you need for heating and cooling in your greenhouse. So climate zones are an interesting topic. They're based on a few things. Often a simple way is to look at them as latitude or how high north or south you are, but that's not all of it. I mean, location to the ocean for ocean currents can drastically affect your climate as well as being in an arid area or super wet area can massively affect your climate and change your climate zone. As well as Canada and the United States actually have different systems in how we rank our climate zones. And I'm gonna get into that in a minute and how the differences will affect what you need to look at. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we got piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing you can check out after you watch this one. Now, one of the interesting things you can do is if you hit like, YouTube is gonna serve up to you other similar videos to this, which means if you want more information on climate zones and latitude and longitude and in-depth explanations of that from other creators, hitting like on this video will get you more information like that from YouTube. Now, when I say climate zones, what I'm really referring to is plant hardiness zones. They exist for both Canada and the USA and they're actually different systems. In the United States, the plant hardiness zone is based upon freezing and how long of a season there is for freezing and how cold it gets. Whereas in Canada, it's not just based on freezing, but it's based on the length of the season. It's also based on the amount of sunlight and the amount of humidity and or rainfall a particular area gets. So the Canadian plant hardiness zone is a little more in depth than the American one. But that being said, they both work relatively well for figuring out what kind of systems you're gonna need in your greenhouse to be able to cope with your specific climate zone or plant hardiness zone. Okay, the first city I'm going to look at is Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Why? Because it's where I live. Well, I'm actually 60 miles north of that, but close enough. That's what you heard of. So Winnipeg is in what's called the Canadian 3A zone. Now, what that means in simple language is it gets down to minus 40 Celsius or Fahrenheit. They're both the same at minus 40. It's just cold, ridiculously cold. So if you're going to run a greenhouse and grow plants in a 3A zone and you wanna go year round, heat is your number one concern. Now, with that being your concern, insulation's number two. You're gonna to need to have a double air blown greenhouse or double or triple wall polycarbonate glass that's double or triple pane. And you're gonna to need the to north wall insulated because there's no point and having low insulation on a big chunk of your greenhouse where you're just gonna see your money fly through the window. Anything facing the sun, you need transparent. Anything not facing the sun needs to be insulated and insulated well. Summertime in Winnipeg, it doesn't get that hot. We're looking at maximums of 35 degrees Celsius with an average summer day of 20 to 25. With those kind of numbers, Cooling isn't a huge concern, although it is a concern with all greenhouses. If you put a greenhouse in the sun, it's gonna heat up. So if your greenhouse is in a 3A zone, the biggest concern you're gonna need for cooling is a good ventilation or fan system. You're not really gonna need much beyond that. Next, I'm gonna do a massive difference in climate. I'm gonna go down to the USA to Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix is a desert type climate and it gets ridiculously hot in the summer. So cooling is your number one concern. Heating, uh, it gets a little bit below zero there, but nothing major. So uh, water barrels that are painted black that heat up in the sun and or a small electric heater for the odd time it dips below zero is probably all you need to get by in Phoenix for heat concerns. But cooling, Shade cloths are, are a possibility, as well as evaporative coolers. The beautiful thing about Phoenix is that it's low humidity. So if you have access to water and you have low humidity, an evaporative cooler is gonna perform exceptionally well for quite affordable air conditioning. 
even though some people call it a swamp cooler, it works much better in a desert environment. Next, I'm going to actually look at New York. Now, what's interesting about New York is the wide range of plant hardiness zones that exist in such a small state. New York ranges from a 3A to a 7B, which means depending upon where you're located, your concerns for heating and cooling in your greenhouse will differ. And the locations vary by elevation and by proximity to the ocean because the ocean can regulate the temperature much better than the inland areas. The inland areas are gonna get a lot colder. So if the more inland you go in the New York area, the more heating in the winter is a concern. The closer you get to the ocean, the more temperate your climate's gonna be and ventilation is probably the only thing you really need to look at other than some mild heating and mild cooling in your greenhouse. So New York, it's actually a great place to grow if you have a greenhouse. San Francisco. Okay, if you want to talk about perfect climates, this is about as good as it gets. San Francisco is on the ocean, so the temperature is actually regulated quite beautifully. It very rarely dips below zero. When it does, a small electric heater for even a larger greenhouse is enough to keep your plants above freezing and not getting damaged. The rainfall isn't that heavy. The humidity is reasonable. There is some heat concerns. They do get a very hot summer, but once again, fans, ventilation works very well in this area. Shade cloths as well would drop your temperature enough to keep everything coming along beautifully in a four season greenhouse growing type environment. Now, here's something that's kind of interesting. Vancouver, Canada is in a Canadian plant hardiness zone of seven to eight which is actually a fairly decent climate. But looking at where Vancouver is, it actually shares the same plant hardiness zone as Northern Texas. The difference being Vancouver is wet. It rains all the time there. The climate is regulated by the ocean, but the mountains right beside the ocean cause an enormous amount of humidity. So when it comes to cooling, because Vancouver can get hot, that's a bit of an issue. Evaporative coolers aren't possible. Vents and shade cloths are probably the best way to look at cooling. There's also earth batteries that may work in this kind of climate using a liquid heat transfer type system. Vancouver is a beautiful area to live and an enormous amount of greenhouses exist in Vancouver producing all kinds of products for the Canadian marketplace. Toronto, Canada is in a zone six which is kind of a middle of the road zone. You're gonna find near Toronto is a lot of Canadian agriculture, especially greenhouse ag agriculture. It does go below freezing. It is Canada, we get Canadian winters in Toronto, but we don't get Winnipeg winters in Toronto. Expect to go minus 10 to minus 20 Celsius. So your heating system should be able to accommodate that with good double pane glazing of some sort and insulation. Most greenhouses in Toronto are heated by natural gas. Um, there's an enormous industry creating uh, vast amounts of fruits and vegetables in that area. And they're all heated by a natural gas furnace. Cooling, once again, Toronto doesn't get super hot, but most cooling in the Toronto area is done by shade cloth and done by large ventilation systems. Okay, when I talk extreme climates and I mention Anchorage, Alaska, most people think, oh my God, that's as far north as I really want to get in still having a reasonable major city. That being said, Anchorage, Alaska doesn't get the same amount of temperature as Winnipeg does. Anchorage sits at around a 4B on the US plant hardiness zone range. It only averages down to minus 20 Fahrenheit Winnipeg gets a lot colder. But in that kind of climate and for the amount of time that Anchorage is in winter and reduced light, heating is a major concern. Now, the most common ways to heat in Anchorage are propane and wood. And Alaska has an enormous, vast resource of wood and people tend to take advantage of that. Lumberjacks, roughnecks, those kind of people know how to work a chainsaw. 
So if you live in Alaska, I'm willing to bet that you're probably heating your greenhouse with wood. That's it, just a quick summary of a few cities and what the concerns are for your greenhouses according to your climate zone in those cities. If you live in those places and you disagree with what I'm saying, you need to state it in the comment below and maybe straighten me out. Other than that, have a great day and I hope to see you next time.